Hey everybody, we're down in Tennessee. I'm here to help my friend Richard install a new solar system in this awesome shed that he and his wife have built over the last week. So Richard, can you catch us up to date on uh, what this shed is and the dimensions and how you put it together? It's a six by four uh, <laughs> solar, well, six by four shed, two by four and two by six construction, insulated. I think the model inverter that Richard bought is the EG4 18K PV. I'll leave a link for it in the description below. Right, Richard and his wife have been working tirelessly for the last week to try to get the shed done um, because, uh, you know, I, I drove down quite a distance to, to get here to help him out and uh, only have a couple of days to assist. <laughs> yes, a lot of work. Um, but, you know, I really wanted to see uh, Richard's setup uh, because uh, I think it's awesome what he's doing here on his homestead. So today's plan, we're gonna try to get that inverter in there and hung um, and batteries wired up, you know, try to see if the thing can, can operate uh, before I need to leave and head back home. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. All right. Let's get started. Here we go. <laughs> This is a three quarter inch plywood floor and the back wall is three quarter inch and I believe he told me that the side walls are half inch plywood. I think so three quarter inch for the heavy stuff to be mounted back there. Studs are 16 inches on center. So we'll try to grab the studs as much as possible. Cool, all right. So this is a uh, Wi-Fi antenna. So we got ourselves some steel brackets. So these steel brackets are for mounting it to the wall. Wow. So this thing is even bigger in person. <laughs> Very big. A couple of, um, couple of ethernet cables. A manual. So here's the hardware supplied. And it looks like we have some expansion anchors. That would be for masonry walls. We have a wood wall, so we'll use the uh, lag screws. It's cool that they supply both. Nice big manual that comes with it. And it looks like we need to keep eight inches at the top, sides, and bottom of the inverter. So also inside the box, we have a pair of CT clamps. On the back of the inverter, there's these steel pockets and that's gonna go with the mounting bracket. So when we put the mounting bracket on the wall, it's gonna fit in just like that, real nice. The inverter is pretty big and heavy, so we're gonna wanna make sure we grab some studs. When we mount the plate up here, we have one stud on this seam and there's another stud just over here. So we're gonna mount it in about this location uh, since the screen is 12 inches below the top, we're gonna want this mounting plate a little bit high so that that screen lines up with eye height. So Richard's holding uh, this for me and we're gonna throw in uh, one screw right here. Should get the stud. Yeah. Great. Now we're gonna add two more, just below, but now we don't have to worry about it being level anymore. Okay. Well, they thought that through those. Yeah. Not as bad as I thought. <laughs> so at this point, we'll add the extra little brackets here on the side. These little L brackets came with the inverter and in the bag, there's a little, little screws. So we'll put these in the sides. So now with the side brackets, we can't pull the inverter off the wall, so we can't lift it off accidentally. Now, Richard, I see a, a, something going on on the side closer to the camera. What's, uh, what's up there in, on the wall? Yeah, it's an exhaust fan. Okay. It's got a thermostat on it so you can set the temperature you know, and help control the climate in there. Okay, cool. Okay. So it's not gonna get too hot. Correct, hope All not. Right. <laughs> we Basically, we're gonna try to keep the temperature uh, below 90 degrees Fahrenheit or so <laughs> in the shed. Uh, this is 
the mountains of Tennessee. In fact, we're very close to the Appalachian Trail, which is just a, a quarter mile or so from where we are right now. So this high in elevation, we're not gonna get super hot, but it is Tennessee. So what kind yeah. of temperatures do we see um, in the summer? We get a lot of humidity. We can get some close to 100 degree heat index days in the summer. Uh, it's been a hot one this year. Um, Fortunately, this side of the house is on the shade, so once we pass noon, it is a little cooler. Okay. But it can heat up in the morning on this side for a little bit. Now, if the inverter is inside the shed with the batteries, the inverter's producing heat, so it is possible that it could get over 100 degrees in there. Oh, very much so. Okay, so that's why we have a fan, and um, but shouldn't need to run all the time, and uh, the hole for the fan can be plugged in the winter if there's a problem with it getting too cold. Uh, I let Richard know that you don't want the batteries below freezing. Uh, they're lithium iron phosphate batteries. Richard bought these nice 600 amp bus bars, uh, the pretty good value from Signature Solar. Again, I'll leave a link for all this stuff in the description below. Since the positive connection on the inverter is to the left, we're gonna put the positive bus bar, which just has some red insulators, more to the left side. And then the negative bus bar, which has some black insulators, more to the right hand side. This is the this is the charge verter that Richard got. Mm -hmm. Nice new setup. All right, so Richard bought this uh, nice charge verter. So we're not going to put any wear and tear with the generator on the uh, inverter. It's going to be through the charge verter. We're gonna mount it to the wall over here, but the charge verters get hot. So we don't wanna mount it directly to the wall. So instead, uh, he's got a scrap piece of cement board, uh, which is something I've used a lot on my projects. And so we're gonna screw the cement board up to the wall, then the charge verter. Charge verter's up on the wall. He came with these battery cables. Uh, these are four gauge. Yeah, so these are four gauge cables. They have a quick connection for uh, connecting them to the charge verter, uh, the Amphenol style connector. And then the other end is a ring terminal which we're gonna run over to our bus bars. So I'm bringing over this negative cable which I wanna to attach to the negative bus bar. And so I'm gonna put it right here. And this little finger of the plastic, I'm just gonna snap that off. There you go. Then I'm gonna mount it right there. Now, if I have to move it over a little bit, that's okay. But that'll give me something to start with. Okay, so I'm gonna have to torque that later and then I'll do the positive one as well. charge verter came with this generator cord. So this is for 240 volts. It's going to plug in. Uh, you can also run it on 120 volts or 208, uh, but there's no neutral. It just takes two hot legs. As of right now, we'll attach it, but we're probably going to take off this plug. Uh, it just unscrews and you'll be left with the bare terminals. We can hardwire it in. The bottom of the inverter has one and a half inch openings and two inch openings. All right, so we have two plastic bushings in here to help protect the wire. And we're gonna run the wire up to the battery terminals. This is a two out wire and Richard got these pre-made from Inverters R Us. Uh, so pretty nice wires. And this is a five foot one. So we're gonna wind up cutting it in half for the two uh, positives. We fished it down here and took a measurement up to the terminal and made a little mark. So we're gonna have a little extra wire in the middle, but we weren't exactly sure where we were gonna mount the bus bars. So we're just gonna cut it here and uh, for the same on the negative side. So 
so it's difficult to know exactly when to stop because these are aluminum blocks and uh, it's very easy to strip them out. So I like to give it a good wiggle. You know, we want to make sure that it's fully seated and this can go more. There, about there is about as tight as I can go and I can pull on these and it's not loosening up. batteries, Batman. Hopefully you can see me all right. It's getting dark out here. Uh, we're running some two gauge uh, wire from the load side of the inverter to the sub panel here, uh, but we have a main breaker of 100 amp, which is why we're using two gauge. So we got it running and I have a load on it right now. So let's check out uh, how we're doing under load. And the load is currently on just one leg. 120.3 volts. So really nice there. We're pulling 31.5 amps. Uh, 31.62 amps times 120 volts. So 3,794 uh, watts on one leg with nothing on the other leg. We're gonna crank up the load on this and uh, see how much it can take before we start losing voltage on one of the legs because this is a load imbalance test. So this is our load bank and we're gonna throw on six kilowatts. Okay. And it shows we're still doing good. Okay, so right now we're at eight kilowatts on one. Still shows 120 volts. Same on my multimeter. So we can at least get a couple of minutes here on eight kilowatts before uh, it shuts off. I'm glad to see it's not shutting off. Uh, we know just a little bit more than this and it shuts off after a couple minutes. So well, that's pretty cool. Uh, well, it has been a very long day uh, getting all of the electrical components installed in here. Uh, but now uh, Richard has an off-grid system. Uh, we were able to low test the 120 volt side up to eight kilowatts, uh, a little bit beyond that and it shut off, but eight kilowatts, I mean, load imbalance, that is very impressive that we still had a clean 120 volts. So uh, yeah, I'm impressed with the unit. So at this point, Richard has roughly 24, 25 kilowatt hours. Uh, he's gonna be hooking this up to his generator. He's actually got a couple different generators that he can choose from for running through the charge verter and recharging the battery bank. Uh, he's got a six kilowatt solar array that he needs to run some new wires over uh, into this unit. Uh, but this is great because uh, Tennessee was hit by a massive hurricane just a couple weeks ago and uh, wiped out power to a lot of people. And uh, so that kind of gave Richard the kick in the butt to uh, want to install a new solar system. Uh, so I was happy that I was able to give him a little hand and make a video for all of you showing an inverter that I have not tested on my channel before. So I hope everybody enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share.